And brown coats as like the firefly. Yep, you're right there. Yep, yes. you got it. <laughs> yes. Had Firefly not been cancelled, where would you have liked Josh Wheaton to take the show? Mm. <sighs> to Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> Too many sandy, dirty desert nights. Yes. <laughs> um, there were so many places to go. There was so much left unsaid. I, you know, I, I still don't know what the mystery behind Bulk's life is. <laughs> 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 um, you know, the, the whole love triangle. Was it a triangle? Was it wasn't really a love triangle. Duty, 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 your duty to your captain versus your duty to your husband. Um, I would love to have gotten Zoe knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> Holding a gun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And what would she look like? It's a you know, child that, that Wash and Zoe would make. What does that kid look like? <laughs> I've, you know, I've often said that, that it, 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 like my like one of my favorite scenes would be I'm looking like I'm looking for this kid. I'm looking for this kid all over the ship, and of course, he or she is with Jane, and he's teaching them about guns. <laughs> shooting the scenes and Wash dies and Boat dies. <laughs> sort of a symbol of, of all of us coming back together and, and, and sort of putting a really pretty bow on it. And now I'm losing my yeah. hands. <laughs> um, so it, it was bittersweet in that way, um, but there was also a finality. There was a, a definite finality to, to what we knew the movie would be. Because it was putting a bow on it. It was trying to, I remember Joss um, saying, it was, it was the two years, it was condensing the two years that he had projected, you know, as a life for the show, at the very least, two years, um, all stuffed into 90 minutes. Um, it was, you know, it, it, it was just that, it's just, just bittersweet, but I'm so, so happy that we got a chance to do that. Yeah. Next question, right there, blue shirt, second one. Actually, uh, with the proliferation of quality cable TV, Netflix bringing back a cult show like Arrested Development, can you chance Firefly to do something? <laughs> I really don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you know, never say never. It's certainly not in my hands. Um, it continues to live a little bit in the comic book editions that come out um, every now and then. I just, I, I don't see it. If we're all. Um, you know, we're all happy actors who are working in, very, in, in vastly different things. And, you know, Marina's busy, she's doing Homeland and doing great, Jules working, everyone, Nathan, <laughs> Adam. Uh, so it would be tough to bring us all back together. Maybe, you know, Firefly Jr. Uh, will come. Um, but, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think that's Joss's focus right now. Uh, question over there with the glasses. Hi. 
Yeah. Hi. Um, mine is not a Firefly question. I was a big fan of Alias. I was a big fan of Anna Espinosa. And I was just always wondering how you liked playing that role because she was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> she was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. Um, yes, she was great. Um, I love Anna. I love Anna. I love that um, that I had a little bit to do with her um, her birth, her origin. She was she was obviously um, conceived um, as a Russian character, and then they were good enough to see me. <laughs> and um, and JJ Abrams was sitting there going, "Okay, well, you, know, you don't have to do a Russian accent." And I said, "But I can." <laughs> And, and he, you could see his wheels kind of, you know, turn. And he said, okay. And then um, April Webster, who was casting it, said, and she's Cuban, so she can do it in a Cuban accent. She, you know. And he said, well, can you? I said, yes, I can. <laughs> and so I ended up doing the audition in both accents and, um, and was hired. And then had, like, was in sort of a story meeting. And he said, well, you know, obviously we think that, that you know, you should, you should do it with a, with a Spanish accent. And I said, why? Well, and he said, well, I said, no. <laughs> um, the Cubans and the Soviet Union had a very long-standing relationship, and there are a lot of Russians running around with like me. <laughs> so why not have me be one of the last of the Cold War babies? And that's a line that they actually used um, in the thing, and it, and it worked great. And I, and I think people sort of loved her because it sort of fit in with that thing. It's like, oh, 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 fun, okay. <laughs> so um, I loved her, I loved her for that. Um, and she was just, a, she loved her job. <laughs> yes, she did. So she she did. Did. you came back in the final season, what was it like to watch Jennifer Garner play Anna Espinosa? playing Sydney Bristow. <laughs> it's so complicated. <laughs> I remember writing to her and going, uh. <laughs> um, I felt a little robbed. I think I was, I was actually working at the time, which is why they had to sort of figure out how to, how to put an end to, to all of that. Um, but I did, get, I did go into the, the pool. I, get, I went into the tank. Um, and came out her. <laughs> if it were only that easy. Um, but I, I just always thought, like, was one final battle? Like, we deserve that. You know, we spent so many seasons kicking each other's asses all up and down, you know, L.A., that we deserved one final battle. Um, and so she killing me, killing herself, was, you know. Okay, pictures. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> uh, got in the suit right there. You didn't want to be in Oh, um, that's a good question. I don't know. I think we, um, I think those of us who um, are in the business try to kind of keep, keep the geek down <laughs> when, you're, when you're meeting another person who's, who you've loved and admired and have watched for so many years because you don't want to be like the fan. <laughs> don't want to sort of, you know, kind of stalk them in the trailer. <laughs> um, but let's see, I don't, um, oh my god, yes, yes, I, say, I can't believe I forgot this. Um, I was, uh, I was at a, a Comic Con in Philly recently, about a couple months ago, and Henry Winkler, <laughs> 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 I, so I went to his booth because I was like, Mr. Winkler, I just have to say. <laughs> and and he, he turned around and went, oh my god, you, you, you are doing, you come here. And he came <laughs> Fantastic.
I'm sick and he's a fan of mine. <laughs> um, if anyone has a question behind that pillar, I really can't see anyone, so I don't want anyone to be forgotten, so just block to that. Um, you over there with a sword. Yeah. Sword? <laughs> uh, was there any role that you played that really got your agent's phone ringing and started to really launch your career, or has it just been a gradual increase because you're just out there more and more and more, and it's wonderful to see, but was there a particular role that really people started to watch? Um, I think, I think it was, it, yeah, it was Alias. It was definitely Alias. Alias had um, a much broader viewership than, um, than the things that I had done prior. I, you know, of course, Firefly was, I did the first season of Alias and then Firefly happened. Yes, because then I was available. So, so, but but um, I was in New Zealand doing Hercules and Cleopatra 2525, and those were sort of closet shows that people sort of loved watching but didn't really admit to watching. Um, and then Alias was sort of was really mainstream. And and what was great about Anna, our dear pal Anna Espinoza, is uh, it was present day and I got to wear great clothes. So it was that combination of, of um, being strong and kick ass and action, but also very much um, within uh, uh, today's world and, and looking like a modern woman. So I think that's what happened. Right over there. I think it's great to have uh, strong female role models on television in a genre that is just so male-oriented. Uh, so I just, uh, and, and your story earlier about uh, being a, a tall woman uh, in the industry, I mean, that's just like the Amazon life. <laughs> yes. I just wondered if uh, from one Amazon to another, is that <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Possibly can you know? Some people work hard, play hard, um, and uh, I just I, I like to just stay within the peace of, of my home and and, uh, and just enjoy the real simple things. I love to cook and, and hang out. My daughter just learned to ride a bike, which is awesome. <laughs> She's just so great, I'm so proud of her. So yeah, it's those it's those little things, and you know when when you when you live life. Um, when your life is so big, um, you know this is this isn't every day. You know you guys are amazing, and it's, it, this is an incredible experience to um, to uh, you know all that uh, all that energy and love and passion that I've sort of been putting out over the years into the darkness, and, you know, into the ends, and to have that sort of reflected back in this way. It's incredible. It's overwhelming. Um, and, but it's not every day. Uh, so, so it's important to just sort of stay grounded and, and be in the every day of your life. Uh, little girl, right over there. Uh, earlier you said you'd like to be in. Yes. <laughs> um, there are what did she few. say? Uh, is there a musical that I would love to be in? Um, and there are a few, um, but uh, most recently there was a fantastic show on Broadway uh, a few years ago called In the Heights, which is kind of the story of my life. Yeah, yeah, because I grew up in the Heights in, in New York, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so I would love to, to, to uh, reprise um, one of those roles if they, if they ever do a revival of it, or if they do a movie of it, that would be awesome. Um, 
And also, I, I think I'm, I'm just the perfect age for it now. Um, Maine. I love to play love to Maine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, those are two, two of um, two of the musicals I'd love to be in. Well, you're picking oh, names. Yeah. It's like yeah. something like Serenity over there. T-shirt. Uh, you talk about strong female women. For the movie Serenity, it seems like you actually made sure that you were physically strong. You worked out a lot. Is that accurate to say? That's maintenance. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yes, um, I spent I spent many years uh, having to be strong and stay strong. I, you know, it was, it was I was one warrior soldier after another. Um, so for Serenity, it was just another, you know, you, you can never, because really, once you stop, we all know what that feels like. <laughs> trying to get back up on that horse. So um, it, I think we all sort of kicked it up a notch, just a little bit, just because we, you know, we, we knew we were going to be 50 feet tall, um, which is not new for me, but um, <laughs> everybody else. Um, so we didn't want to disappoint anybody. So we definitely kicked it up a notch, and um, yeah, that was fun. I think it, I think it all worked out well. Yeah. Uh, green sweater. That's Jane. Uh, this is okay. I have a firefly question. Yep. Um, if you became captain of the ship for whatever reason, Mal was incapacitated or didn't come back, what do you think would happen as Zoe? I'd wear a dress. <laughs> <laughs> I would finally get to ooh, new sheriff in town. <laughs> um. um you know, I don't know. I think, um, yeah, that I was not expecting that question. <laughs> um, I think, by and large, she and uh, and Mal were cut from a very similar cloth, so I don't think things would change too much. But you know, when there's a woman, <laughs> anything's possible. <laughs> Having a big lawyer's job now, was there any like horrible jobs you've had before acting that were fun to talk about? Or... Um, I've never had a horrible job. Um, thank God. I wasn't digging ditches or cleaning. Well, <laughs> I was a manager in a restaurant, uh, and I did have to make sure that the stalls were tidy. Um, but there was, there was a period in my life where I just kind of worked, I, I was working two jobs, and so I was a receptionist um, in the morning from nine to four-ish. And then I would um, take a break, I'd usually go to the theater, or I'd go to a movie, pack my lunch, go to a movie, and then manage a restaurant from six at night to two o'clock in the morning. And so I get home, and so after I was done, you know, doing the managerial work, it was usually about four. I go home, and just as I, just as I would go down, the sun would be coming up in my window, and I'd have to kind of start it all over again. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a few months. 